Hi, everybody. Hopefully you can hear me loud and clear and uh, great to be back. And uh, we are on Ninja Trader. And uh, just to pick up on what Anna was saying, we um, we managed to escape to Italy for a couple of weeks. We decided to um, make a very fast trip abroad. We always drive, so it's a two and a half thousand mile round trip, which we managed to do in a couple of weeks. And we managed to squeeze in some sailing. We got out in the uh, in Philonica Bay in a lovely catamaran for a couple of days, and we saw the dolphins. But then at the end of the holiday, we managed to contract COVID on the way back. So it's um, it kind of took the gloss off the holiday, I have to be honest. And we've just about recovered now. You certainly wouldn't have wanted to hear us last week, that's for sure. So if I switch off, it means I've started coughing. So apologies in advance. Um, I just want to pick up on the, just looking at the indices. We'll look at the indices. We'll go to Tesla because Tesla results will be coming out fairly soon. Um, and for a heavily bearish trader like myself, I love days like this. I love what's going on in Tesla. Those of you who come along regularly, you'll know that um, I have a huge bias to the short side, which I'm well aware of, very conscious of all the time. And it's something you have to live with. Uh, the reason I have it is because markets move much more quickly to the downside than they do to the upside. Uh, it's just a fact of life. And therefore, I'm always looking for shorting opportunities. Of course, I trade to the long side. But if I see a shorting opportunity, and I'll show you a couple here, and the sort of candles which fill my heart with joy, because when I see them, excuse me for a moment, Because when I see them, I am Im Im immediately looking for the opportunity, provided it's backed up with volume and the volume story is good, then uh, they just really confirm it for me. I wanted to start here because if you're going to be trading index futures, Anna's mentioned index futures, meant to spy obviously a great deal. If you're going to be trading index futures, then please, please do not start. If you've got no experience, do not start with the top line. On the top here, we've got one minute time frame, and I've got the YM, the Russell, I've got the ES, and I've got the NQ. They are the full-blown futures contracts. They are big money. You make money very quickly. You will need a very uh, sizable amount of margin to trade even just one contract. If you're trading multiples, even more so. You will make money very quickly if it's moving in the right direction. You will lose money equally quickly if it goes against you. So my advice is very simple on the uh, layer below, on the four charts below. We have the micro futures. We've got the MYM, the M2K, the MES, and the MNQ. So if futures are new to you, please, please start with the micros. I can't stress it too strongly. They are a tenth the size. So if you're looking at something like the YM, and there are variants of the YM, there's the small DAO and the big DAO. The big DAO is $25 a point, but the the, the uh, more popular one, I would say, is the, the, the straightforward YM, which is $5 a point. Then if you look at the MYM, you're a tenth of that, so you're 50 cents a point. So if the contract goes 15, 20 points against you, it's a handful of dollars and it's much more manageable. You will still learn in the same way. And the reason I put them up here is because quite often when you see these micro contracts, these are pretty new. They've been out about three years now, I think. They are hugely popular, hugely liquid, and you can see how the price action, although you're looking at different time frames, you can see how liquid it is. It flows very nicely, it's not gappy. When you look at some contracts, some futures contracts like uh, gold, for example, you look at the micro gold contract, the MGC, um, the same principle applies. It's a micro, it's a tenth, but the price action is very stuttery. It's, it's, it stutters. It'll move a little bit, maybe get a candle, and then it'll stop, and you'll get two bars appear, and then it'll move on again. And it's just not what you want to see because it makes reading volume price analysis very, very difficult. The reason I highlight these contracts is twofold. First of all, to, to tell you that they are available because some traders are not aware that they're, they're available. You can see how bearish we are at the moment. We're still falling away quite strongly, really nice move. 
and that's reflected on the five minutes so and and on the micro contracts themselves so please start with the micros if you are new to uh, trading uh, the index futures we started in a most bizarre way as some of you i'm sure many of you know we started trading full-size contracts we didn't know they were full-size contracts at the time we just that's just the way we started at 10 pounds a point trading FTSE futures through the Liffey exchange i don't recommend you start that way our journey into trading and investing was very odd the highlight of it and the thing that we are eternally grateful for is that we started with volume many traders many investors come to volume after they've had a tortuous journey of losing money trying this that and the other and, and really not succeeding and, and can't really understand why as i'm talking to you I'm, you know my eyes caught immediately by that volume spike that's come in you can't miss these things they just hit you between the eyes you've got a big down candle up here and the other reason that i like to have all four up is because anna mentioned relational analysis now you might think of relational analysis of obviously the dollar and commodities and i've got dollar and gold up so we'll take a look at that shortly which is a very traditional relationship commodities and gold but you can also think of relational uh, analysis in a much more s simplistic way if you like where we are looking at four uh, instruments here for related markets but nevertheless they don't always go in the same direction on occasion, you'll find some indices going up. You'll see the NQ leading and the others may be lagging or maybe even going the opposite direction. So this is another aspect. It's a very simple aspect of relational analysis. You can all do it. You just pull up these charts, put them alongside one another, and instantly you get several things. You get a different view of volume price analysis because the candles are not all identical. They are at the moment, but often they are not. So you get a view of volume price analysis. And it also gives you a confirmation that the trend that you're trading or about or the trade you're about to take is confirmed across that piece of the market. In other words, the sentiment, the global sentiment towards equities, US equities at any rate, is either risk on, risk off, or going sideways. Clearly, at the moment, it's risk off. The markets are falling. They're falling quite strongly. The only thing we've got to be conscious of is the fact that we are coming towards the end of the session. And therefore, it's a question of how close do you want to get to the end of the session before you either allow your trade to roll through into the next session or you close out ahead of it. Those are decisions you have to take at the time. And the same sort of decision applies to. Um, uh, trading intraday for Tesla, for example, where we've got Tesla now, we've had a very nice move lower, but we are very close to an earnings announcement. So clearly, you don't want to be in there unless you particularly want to be, but I would suggest you don't. If you're day trading, most people would have closed out some time ago, or they would be in the options market looking at options strategies. Now, options is something we cover in huge detail, and options are Anna mentioned about the bond market being so so critical now, an understanding of the bond market and, and knowing what is going on in there. I would say the same applies to the options market. 15, 20 years ago, the options was, it wasn't quite a backwater, but it was certainly a more specialist market. Now it is hugely mainstream. It has a massive impact purely by virtue of the tsunami of volume that goes through the options world. And if you don't understand and correlate the options with stocks, with what is going on broadly across the sentiment of the market, then you really are going to struggle, certainly from an intraday perspective. If you're just trading intraday stocks, fine, OK, but you've got to understand what's going on in the options world simultaneously so you can marry the two together. So you can see what's going on here. We're still bullish, we're still bearish, rather. The other reason for having multiple time frames up is you see things that you wouldn't necessarily see elsewhere for example if we look across the top line we can see that for a while here we were trading very much around the volume point of control this yellow dash line here was the volume point of control so if we're on a slower time frame and we're seeing that then it gives us a heads up as to why perhaps the market has stalled for a little bit well we're at the volume point, point of control and we were at it on all four of the indices across here 
And these are the sorts of things you're looking for in multiple time frames. You're looking for validation, you're looking for information, you're looking for pieces of the jigsaw puzzle which tell you things about why a market has stalled. We've got this ton of volume coming down here on five minute. It's come in pretty much universally across all four of the indices, as you can see here, the, the micros. We've got a nice wick to the lower body of the, each of those candles. What is that telling us? It's telling us loud and clear that there is some, some serious buying has come into the market at this point. So at the very least, we are expecting a pause point. We may get a bounce coming into the last 10, 15, 20 minutes, which wouldn't be a great surprise given the amount of volume that's come in. But if you're short this market and you see that, it really is time to bank your profit and just say, thank you very much, I'm off. Because as I say, it will either go sideways or it will bounce higher. Why? Purely based on one very simple signal with this high volume that suddenly come in just after 2045, 2050, 2045, 2046 our time in the UK because it's now nine minutes to go to nine o'clock before the close of the US session. And you can see it throughout. It's even clearer here on the, uh, the Russell. You've got a ton of volume comes in. You've got a wick to the lower body. What is that telling you? It's telling you there is buying in there. There has to be because if that were not the case, this candle would be down here. It would have closed with a widespread. It hasn't closed with a widespread. It's closed with a narrow spread. What does that imply? It implies there has to be buying in here, which has forced the price back up. And you've got good volume under it. So it's telling you it is a serious, serious level of buying on that particular time frame. Now I mentioned at the start about the candles that I always look for, and you've got some you've got some lovely examples here, and there's one that really just stands out, and there's this candle here. You've got it here, you've got it here, and you've got it over here. Perhaps if we pull this one up. And again, it doesn't matter what time frame it is, it happens to be five minutes. In this case, you've seen the start of the session. We've had quite a bit of oscillation around the volume point of control. Maybe you didn't fancy any of this stuff up here. Maybe you set some levels. You've got a floor of level, you know, possibly to the short side. You think maybe this is going to break to the short side. But it's you've got two bar reversals, and you've got lots of things going on in terms of the volume profiles as well. But when you start to see things like this, and you've got much the same here, it's this sort of candle. But when you see it in a downtrend, this big wick to the upper body, it's preceded by some narrowing price action. So the spreads are narrowing, the volume's pretty low. In other words, it's really, this has really not got any great momentum. There is no great desire to move higher here. The volume is, is below average at best. So the market is pretty weak. It's trying to recover a little bit, but it's really not going far. And then you get one of these things coming in, and then you start to see the move unfold. And it's also punctuated when we get to these little um, congestion phases, which are inevitable. You get a little bit of buying coming in under that one, but you get another effort to rally, but it's on really weak volume. The market has tried to rally. You've got a wick to the upper body, bang, on down we go. I cannot tell you. It doesn't matter if you don't get in on that one, but once you see these things coming along, they are great confidence builders that yes, we are going in the right direction. And it's just a question of waiting and being patient for them to arrive. And they arrive in all downtrends. Got them here. And the reason they arrive, this is the one here, the similar one, effort to rally. And you know, on down we go into our price waterfall, bit of congestion developing here and on down again. They occur in all time frames, very strong intraday candles. If you don't get into a price waterfall early, it's fine. All you do is wait for congestion phase and wait for one of these to come along or two if you're lucky. You know, maybe you'll see a little rally. That little rally will be on, on weak volume. Then you'll see these uh, candles here. This is basically the market makers or the insiders selling out on stuff on stock they've had to accumulate or contracts they've had to accumulate on the way down. They push the market up. There's really no. Uh, reason for it to go any higher they're selling into weakness anyway but they're having to sell back to the market down it comes again and on down we go on to the next level down 
it's a hugely, hugely important candle to look out for. And equally, the opposite of that is when you see a hammer candle to the downside. When you see uh, the market rallying, you'll see the market rise, it falls back, you'll see a deep lower wick to, to the body, lots of volume coming in, it's telling you the buyers are stepping in again, they don't want this market to reverse, and on up we go. So it's exactly the opposite in terms of a mirror. This is what I said about the bounce, and no great surprise, and all of that has come as a result of one candle and one piece of volume. And that really encapsulates volume price analysis. It encapsulates the power of volume price analysis. Yes, of course, there are many other aspects. Yes, of course, we put it together with all the indicators as well. But that is the foundation methodology on which we build everything, including all the new indicators which we've uh, released on TradingView, which are vo volume based. All three of them are volume based. And I'll, I'll run through them very quickly for you. So that's where we are. We're coming to the end of the session. And just one other point to highlight on here. I put the, the two other indicators. Um, sorry, just got one other indicator on here, which is the volume point of control. Just to remind you that the volume point of control works in, well, there are two aspects to it. First of all, we've got our volume point of control here, which tells us where we are, whether the price is in congestion. More importantly, when price is approaching it on a different time frame, it tells us that if, if the price gets there, then we like to see congestion. So it's equally important from that perspective. But in addition to that, we have the histogram here. And volume works in precisely the same way as it does with price-based support and resistance. And by that, I mean where we have deep areas of volume, then expect price to congest where we have low volume nodes here, where we had here, for example, expect the price to move through there fairly rapidly because there's nothing in the way to support it from a volume perspective. So where you've got price coming up to a low volume node, happy days, the price should move through there pretty rapidly. If it's coming up to a high volume area, then expect the price to congest. Let's just go and have a look at Tesla. 